Hey GED students, it's GED question of the daytime. And uh, right here, we're gonna extend this knowledge we've been working on about equivalent fractions to a new level, one that you need for adding and subtracting fractions. So let's take a look at the problem. It says, find a fraction that is equivalent to three fourths. And I'll just remind you, um, if I say equivalent, what do I mean by that long math word? It just means equal, guys equal. So I'm asking you to find a fraction that is equal to three-fourths. It has the same basic relationship as three-fourths, and it has a denominator of 20. Now, students freak out about this. There's actually a lot of different ways to do this, but uh, my problem with you guys in fractions is that you memorize, memorize, memorize without ever understanding. You're like, I'll memorize these steps and those steps and these steps and those steps and this steps and flip it and keep it and, and common denominator and all the steps get mushed into your head in one big jumble and you mix them all up on the test. You do one thing when you should be doing another and when you're adding, you're making like you're multiplying and when you're multiplying, you're making like you're adding and you don't know when to reduce and when to not reduce and you lose your minds, okay? So we've just got to show more understanding about what I basically mean when I talk about fractions. So let's think about this. A fraction is not its individual numbers. This fraction is not three and four, like three and four are two separate numbers. A fraction is a relationship between a numerator and a denominator. So what we're looking for here, if we say that we want to find an a, fra a fraction that is equivalent to 3 fourths and has a denominator of 20, is something that has 20 things on the bottom but retains that basic relationship of 3 to 4. So let me show you what I mean. For every 3 on top, we'll have 4 on the bottom of our fraction. For every 3 in the numerator, we'll have 4 in the denominator. Now, I want to maintain that exact same relationship, but get all the way to a denominator of 20. Meaning, let's see, let's try another 3 on the top, 4 on the bottom. So if I look at this relationship, now I have a total of 6 dots on top, uh, 8 dots on the bottom. It retains this relationship of 3 to 4, but we've got to keep going because we said we wanted 20 dots on the bottom. So let's think about it. And I'm going in groups of four. Four, eight, twelve. Now I have 16 dots, uh, 13, 14, 15, 16. Now I have 20 dots. I have 20 dots on the bottom, but I've got to retain that relationship of three to four. For every four dots on the bottom, I need three on the top. So there was that one group of three to four, another group of three to four. Let's get three up here for to keep this group of three to four in the same relationship, that group of three to four in the same relationship, and that group of three to four in the same relationship. Now I have this preserved relationship that for every four dots on the bottom, I have three things on the top. For every four things in the denominator, I have three things in the numerator. So now let's see how many things we end up with in the numerator as we keep this relationship. So I end up with three, six, nine, 12, 15. Now you might be thinking, Kate, that's all well and good, but I can't be drawing dots all over my paper every time I go to, uh, you know, find equivalent fractions. And you're right, you can't. But what you can think of is how many groups of four uh, were there in 20? I had to have five groups. I had to take four and multiply it by five. I needed five groups of four to make 20. And since we're going to preserve that relationship, we're going to have the same number of groups on the top that we had on the bottom. So I could multiply the top by the exact same number times five up top. So if I have five groups of four on the bottom, I'll make sure I have five groups of three on the top. I'll multiply the top and bottom by the same number. So that's an easy way to see multiply the top and bottom by the same number. And of course, 3 fourths is equivalent to 15 over 20. And you might be saying, how could these two things be equal, Kate? How could they be equal when I did some math on that? Think about what you did there. When you take 3 fourths and times it by 5 over 5, 5 fifths is just one whole thing. 5 divided by 5 is 1, or 5 over 5 is 1. You have one whole thing if you have 5 fifths. And as we should all know, and we've known since third grade, when you multiply by 1, I don't care what the 1 looks like, if it's just equivalent to 1, you're not changing the value of your number. Therefore, 
I was able to raise this guy without changing his value. Therefore, three fourths is equivalent to 15 twentieths. All right. Hope that made sense to you. Uh, tune in for more uh, tricks with fractions in the coming days. If you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments. I'll do my very best to answer it.